Bucky. Bucky! Bucky! What is Bucky? Is it JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 2.5? Perhaps it's a JoJo part within a JoJo part within a JoJo part? Or is it a gay fantasy of a very thirsty man? We will answer none of these questions and more on this episode of The Art Evolution. Baki has a very rich history, which many people are simply not aware of. Grappler Baki started publication in 1991 under the Shonen Champion magazine. It ran for nearly 400 chapters and covered arcs leading up to the start of the Netflix anime. Yes, the start of the Netflix anime, which skipped over 400 chapters of backstory. That's like reading JoJo's parts 3 before Phantom Blood and Battle Tendency. And we all know skipping JoJo parts is one of the biggest blasphemies. Basically, long story short, the Baki franchise is split between five major parts. Grappler Baki, New Grappler Baki, Baki Son of Ogre, Baki Do 2014, and finally, Baki Do 2018, which finished publication just a few months ago. Holy shit, that's a lot of Bakis. After showing you how this franchise is literally longer than One Piece, you might be thinking, Oh wow! You must have changed a lot, huh? And you will be right. But to keep my sanity in check, we'll just be covering the beginnings of Grappler Baki all the way up to the midpoint of new Grappler Baki's four Death Row Convicts arc. And trust me when I say this, each topic gets crazier and crazier. Let's start off with the anatomy. Surprisingly, the anatomy of Baki once upon a time was actually normal. Most of the characters were still shredded, but they had realistically defined muscular structure. The artist gave them less definition, bulk and more body fat, and they actually resembled normal gym rats. If you categorize their shape into a simple polygon, they will start to resemble squares. Subconsciously, this shape gives you a feeling of safety, calmness and subtlety, while the triangular shape is far more aggressive and assertive. Assertive. We will get back to this. But whilst the bodies were realistic, the faces on the other hand... Eesh, that's a whole other story. Whilst the bodies were very natural, the faces were drawn with clear 1990s anime influence, resembling series such as Devil Man and Gundam. It sports a very cartoony style with hyper-exaggerated expressions. The faces themselves didn't really have much detail either. Wrinkles, smudges, and scratches were very loose, and this amplified the cartoony nature even more. In the new Grappler Bucky, however, the art style took a far more familiar and permanent style we're accustomed to. Much slimmer eyes, more definition around the faces, and a variety of shapes to give individuality to everyone. Actually, no, that's a lie. Um, along with the faces becoming slightly more realistic, the author started to introduce a lot of tropes. A lot of baby face characters like Baki and etc. shared very similar lips, eyebrows, and even noses. Sometimes they really resembled each other. But overall, the artist gave a lot more detail to every single one of these faces. I mean, hell, if he didn't, we wouldn't get Yujiro's iconic smile. Look at this fucking dude. Whilst the manga still did not shy away from the cartoony, batshit, insane expressions, what made this this shit far more terrifying is the added detail. This shit is nightmare fuel. Whilst the faces did start to become grounded in reality, the bodies are just a whole other story. Like what the fuck do these guys eat? They're probably eating 0.1 grams of calories and fucking 700 grams of protein a day. The muscles look like inflated balloons and they had very slim waists and profoundly chiseled muscles. This is what I was implying in the previous section, how characters start to resemble more triangles, with their shoulders, back muscles expanding so rapidly and their waists actually Actually becoming a twig, they literally looked like upside down Doritos. Whilst it did give these characters a level of intimidation, they, they kind of just look ridiculous. It's kind of interesting how the faces became realistic, whilst the bodies became overly more cartoony. Sure, with some characters like Biscuit Oliver, they did resemble actual IRL bodybuilders. But in most cases, it's like, Bucky, like what the fuck? You're not hunger strike, and you still have like what a hundred pounds of muscle on you? If there was one thing that certainly made Baki far more grounded in reality, it would be the shading. The shading is by far my most look forward topic to discuss because it just like, it conveys so much information to you in such a short amount of time, like anyone looking at this will know exactly what's going on and how things changed. Despite its simplicity, it can just change the aesthetic completely. 
If there was one thing Crappler Bakis art lacked, it was the shading. It was nearly completely devoid of everything. It felt like I was looking at a few lines on a white box at JPEG. This had an added side effect of making the artwork feel far more scratchy and overly slender, despite the line work actually being very consistently smooth and clean. The lack of shading forced the art to fully depend on the line work for everything, from conveying information to giving characters detail to even the fight scenes, and as we'll discuss later, this had very detrimental effects. Whilst the shading was present in some moments, specifically on close-ups and impactful panels, it was still nearly completely devoid. Although the author did use gradient texture fills to actually give some grey tones to the art, but this was very few and far between and mostly restricted on characters' clothing. Now, Grappler Baki. Ooh boy, this is a whole other story. If you just asked the author how much shading he would add, he would just tell you, yes. Every single panel without exception has abundance of shading, giving everything a lot more volume, definition, subtlety, and realism. You will be hard pressed to actually find a single panel without significant grey tones. Of course, with abundance of shading you gotta include highlights, but surprisingly, the mangaka didn't use many different shading styles. Cross etching and the pure black black inks were really accustomed to was nowhere to be found. He specifically only used two tones of shading. The backgrounds in Baki followed the exact same formula. They just became far more detailed and every square inch of it had grey tones. But the effects are not that simple. This amount of detail and grey tones did many things to not only convey characters locations and clarity, but they also helped with conveying how impactful some attacks were. You might be asking how the backgrounds helped the foreground strikes become better. Well, it is very bizarre. Previously, the choreography of fights tended to shy away from depicting 3D environments and stuck to the more orthodox camera angles. It used a lot more manga fighting tropes to convey motion, such as various after images of characters in different poses, the flurry of fists, and abundance of speed lines. Despite the manga's obvious artistic simplicity, this is when the problems kinda came up. Because Grappler Baki had nearly no shading before and heavily leaned on very thin line work, the speed lines, which were basically the same thickness of the line work, really made everything a massive mess, especially when you take into account the after images of characters. Sometimes you just wouldn't understand what was happening because it just looked like a bunch of tangled lines. On the other hand, however, new Grappler Baki, there was only one thing to describe describe the fights, and that is clarity and impact. That's two words, but whatever. When it comes to impact and speed, characters' arms would convert to these massive lances of light which would obliterate their opponents, contrasting the grey backgrounds in the characters, and it commanded your attention with the usage of negative space, depicting the devastating attacks in motion. This is why shading is so pivotal. If everything here was completely devoid of shading, this bunch of blob in the center would mean nothing, but since it was the highlight of the entire page, it just darted your attention right past it and onto the victim that was about to receive it. It felt like a train crashing into these characters. And this design is so unique and effective however, even the anime uses it on a regular basis. But there are multiple reasons for this. Mainly the characters are so damn detailed, you can't just animate them on fucking MAPPA level. Not even they can do it. With Sakuga you usually lower the detail and shading to improve frame rate, but with Baki that would simply not work because detail is so essential to these characters. So they opted to actually take a few pages from the manga, literally, to convey motion. And to be honest, I take this over the other 3D shit any day fam. Like, do you remember how Baki season 1 looked? This shit was abysmal, like, this, uh, nah brother, I do not want this, fuck that. 